Hello there and welcome back to the second part of the Tileable Ground Texture tutorial. In this second part we'll take a look at creating less seeming textures by actually overlapping some of the blocks and I'll show you how you can get more variation in the sculpts, um, add a little more depth to the stones and lastly I'll show you how you can create less photorealistic textures and more of a stylized style by just a few quick steps you don't even need to hand paint really. Alright, so at the start I'm recreating the three blocks that I told you about in the first part of this tutorial series. So basically it's exactly the same way I've done it in this part. I've moved the origin to one of the corners and then scaled it down to fit our reference plane. After that I've created a little overlay texture um, from the color grid to show you exactly how we need to move our blocks later so that they will tile perfectly. Now this is certainly pretty easy if you just think about what tiling means. It means that they need to overlap at the seams if we move them out of the bounds. So we'll just need to leave a free space on the opposite side if we move it out by 4 units like in this video then we will actually need to leave a space of 4 units on the opposite side. And then, after we've done that with the sculpted cubes later, or sculpted tiles, we can just duplicate it the same way we did in the first part. So just duplicate it, or just join it, then duplicate it and move it around the edges. And as you can see, those pieces will fit in perfectly. Alright, so now I've set the blocks up again. So I've applied two subdivision um, yeah, subdivision modifiers in the edit mode, then added a subdivision surface as a modifier, set it to smooth, applied the modifier and added a multi-res on top, and applied the scale of the blocks. After that I've arranged the blocks around the um, reference square, and I've left out space on the opposing sides of the overlapping blocks. So now I move some of them out of the bounds and you can see I need to leave a space on the opposing side. I create little dummy cubes so I know I can't place anything at those points. Then I will just lay out my pattern as in the, yeah, the same way as in the first video. And if you're happy with that, you can start sculpting onto them. Now for sculpting, I've started off with exactly the same settings than in the first part. I've used the scrape and peak brush with um, a hard brush setting on the curve. You can actually change the settings of this curve to affect how soft or hard your brush will be. Then I've activated trimming, front faces only, so we don't apply our you know, sculpting to the back side of these tiles that would lead to artifacts. And I've also set the strength of the brush to full so I get clear cuts at the edges that I kind of scrape away. Also, don't forget to lock the aerial plane, as else you will get weird transformation and have no real control over yeah, how, how you would like to scrape off the edges. Now this is exactly the same method that I've used in the first part of the tutorial, but in addition to that I've used the clay brush and overlaid some sort of yeah, washed up a stone to give it some more texture than just the flat surface. Now the purpose of these stones was to create some sort of yeah, sand stones that are a bit wet, which we will see later with the spec map, and they should look like they were washed away a bit by um, water, and you can achieve that by using a softer brush and yeah, just overlaying it with clay and subtracting with clay sort of on the surface. So if you really want to create rocks or stones, you should use more harder edges and not these sort of soft brushes. But we will cover that in the next tutorial on yeah, rock creation and rock sculpting.
Alright, so after you're done with your sculpt, you can just apply the modifiers again and set the ground plane to smooth shading and join all of this, duplicate it around everything so you can now see if you yeah, calculated the rig overlays right, they should perfectly fit into each other, into the little spaces that you've created. And after that, you're ready to export this whole high poly thing. And yeah, again, create the low poly plane that should exactly fit the size of the first plane. So I usually just use the standard size so that I don't get messed up with that. If you want to create more detailed textures, you don't need to actually make the bricks smaller, but you could yeah, just scale up the two reference planes. And so you could fit more bricks into one of the plane. So your 1024 by 1024 texture, for example, will cover more space and thus you will have, yeah more work but also more variety and detail. After that we will again just bake out the textures, the normal map and the ambient occlusion map from XNormal, the same way we did in the first part, so just drag and drop to the high definition mesh and to the low definition mesh and go to the baking options, select everything you need, so the right uh, texture size, the name, the output file and only select normal map and then hit generate or bake. All right, so then we are ready to go to Jim and create our textures. Now this time we'll do it a little bit differently. Again, we will import the AO map first and overlay our rock texture on top. I've selected some sort of yeah, more sand rock looking thingy, some yellowish brownish tones, and again made it tileable or seamless with the filter. After that, I've selected the color picker and selected sample merged. This way, the color picker won't only use the colors from the current layer, but from anything that's under it on the color yeah, info. So you can just use the color picker wherever you are, no matter on what layer you are currently at. Then I selected the basic brush and with hitting control, you can switch between the brush and the color picker and picked out some colors of this texture. I just painted them onto a new layer so I can repick those for painting my blocks then. Now I've just created a new layer on top of the AO map and filled the single blocks with the different colors I've just picked from the texture. Now you should make sure to be quite detailed about painting so you don't have to fix issues after that and the more detailed you are the less work you will have. Also keep in mind that some of these blocks were the overlapping blocks so you have to paint them in the exact same color so you should keep the yeah, pattern you made in mind and remember which blocks were the overlapping ones you can usually see that because they have no occlusion at the borders of the image. So those are the ones that are overlapping and should be painted in the same color as their opposing side. Now after I'm done painting all these little blocks out, I've overlaid the um, ambient occlusion map with multiply again and overlaid the rock texture with soft light. So now only a little bit of this rock texture will actually get added to the diffuse map and most of the yeah, variety in the texture will come from the colors that we've painted before. As you can see here, I've, yeah, I was kind of reckless with the <laughs> painting, so I made a lot of errors at some, um, yeah, some of the blocks. I didn't paint them well, as I've said in my first video. Now, since preschool children probably paint better than me, <laughs> um, I will try. So, yeah, I had to go and fix those up by actually and either painting over them or using the smooth brush to uh, kind of sort out the colors. As we overlay the ambient occlusion map, we can actually kind of play with the color map on the bottom of that without affecting the yeah, shadows. And thus we have easier control over the colors without messing up the whole diffuse texture. All right, so now I created the spec map the same way as in the first video. And as you can see, um, if you just use the current diffuse texture to create the, level, uh, the, the spec maps by using the levels, you will actually have more specularity on those blocks that are brighter. And that's not what we want. We want the same level of specularity over all those blocks. Now this brightness on some of the blocks is due to the colors we've painted before. So I just went and re-imported the rock texture and deleted the color level which we painted so that I have the same yeah, brightness on all the blocks and then reuse those filters, desaturate and levels and just move the parameters so it fits my needs and we can actually 
that kind of influence how bright the texture should be lit by the specularity lighter. After we've created all the textures, we then can just import those into our engine and take a look if they work correctly. In this case, I'll use the BGE again in GLSL mode and just import the diffuse, the normal map and the spec map. And yeah, just set them up normal to affect the geometry and spec map to only affect the specularity. And as you can see, this is sort of like, as I said in the beginning, um, some sort of wet stone washed up sandstone. And if you don't like that, if you want less specularity, you don't need to change the texture itself. You can just decrease the influence of the specular map onto this texture. Now this is specific for Blender. It works similar in other engines and in some you can only kind of change the intensity by changing the value of the spec map. But you can just go back to GIMP and play with the yeah, levels a bit to decrease the specularity again. Alright, so this was just a quick addition to my first part, not much of new things, just to repeat everything and so you get a little bit more confident in creating these textures and some more tips on how you can decrease the seaming and increase the, the kind of texture quality by giving it more values, more colors and painting it a bit by yourself, choosing the right texture on top and that will create awesomely looking ground textures. So again, if you have any questions, suggestions, anything you can think of, just leave me a comment and I'm happy to help if possible. Thanks for watching.